Good morning. So today we're going to talk about diet. So I've been on the diet for exactly, look at the papers, 54 days today. To date, I lost 33 pounds. And I did it on a carnivore diet. So let me give you a little background. I've tried every diet known to man. Uh, initially, I always lose 5 to 10 pounds the first week on any diet. Then it stalls, and I typically don't lose nothing else. You get frustrated, and basically you give up, and there goes that diet. So I'll give you a little background. I have really bad case of edema. That's when your lower extremities retain water from your veins. There's valves in your veins, and they can't expel the water. There's an operation that they can strip the veins and rebuild them, but it's not always successful, and there's a lot of risk involved, and I didn't want to go through that. So what would happen is, uh, about 10 years ago, we worked on a vehicle that had a side step, like in a pickup truck, and it had a jaggered edge. And I was wearing shorts at the time. When I got out of the truck, my rear calf on my left leg scraped that jagged edge and cut it. That wound opened up Pandora's box because my leg would weep liquid and never heal because of the edema. And what that does is you get, without warning, you'll get infections and you get fever and it's all because that wound that doesn't heal gets infected. I battled this on and off for the last 10 years. Not fun. And I would wear compression socks, which I cannot stand. And they would always get wet because you get weeping leg when you have this. And it's painful as hell. I didn't sleep well. Practically live on painkillers of Tylenol and over-the-counter crap, which is no good for you either. So, I had to do something. So, the one diet that worked just as well as this, which I recommend also, is Jason Fong's book, Life in the Fasting Lane. And basically you fast, you eat whatever you want the days you want to eat but you fast for two or three or four or five days in the time. And that's another good alternative to the carnivore diet, my opinion. So I'll give you a little background what led me down to the carnivore diet. And this is nothing new. There's better videos than I can ever do on this um, to detail it better. But I'll just tell you my story. And why I think this diet worked better than most other diets. I know many people have gone on keto diet and lost a lot of weight. And I think the reason is this. I was never, not never, but the last 15 years, not really a junk food eater. I wasn't big into cake and donuts. Not that I don't like it. I like it like everybody else. But I didn't, I stayed away from it. I haven't had ice cream in probably 15 years. Um... I love ice cream, but I stay away from it. So I don't drink regular soda, never did. I never liked it. I drink diet soda, which is not good for you either, but at least it was diet soda. So I was really not a sugar addict. Um, so the keto diet really didn't, I didn't get good results with that where a lot of people have, but I think those people were big sugar eaters with cake, candies, and that type of thing. I wasn't so... The result was not good. So, my wife got turned on to this Dr. Stephen Gundry, and he's plant-based and only has meat once in a while as a treat for the week. And we both tried that diet. She convinced me to try it. We did it for three weeks. Big into mushrooms, no nightshades, no starches, only healthy oil, perilla oil, I think it's called. Um, 
really good olive oil you can have. And in three weeks, not only we didn't feel better at all, nothing changed, and we did not lose any weight at all. Big salads, tons of mushrooms, which I love mushrooms. No benefit did we see at all. And what I realized is, as she's telling me this thing, because she was reading the book and this and that, I said, you know, that contradicts what Dr. Ken Barry says. And Ken Barry, look him up on YouTube, big carnivore advocate. He's a real doctor. Jason Fong is a real doctor. These are credible people that put their reputations on the line. So, and Dr. Gundry's a doctor. And I'm sure his thought, meaning, his intentions are well, but he sells a lot of product, and I think that's his angle. And I think for some people, his diet may work well. For us, it didn't. So I convinced my wife, I said, listen to Ken Barry a few times. And she did, and she says, all right, I'll give it a try. So we both started the carnivore diet 54 days ago. She's also down 30 pounds. And she's hooked now. So what do we eat in a day? That's the biggest question people want to know. So a typical day, every day you see me with this coffee cup, 24 ounces of coffee, Guatemalan, fresh ground beans every morning, and there's a pat of butter, about a quarter inch from a stick of Kerrigold's butter, grass-fed butter, inside this coffee. So it's sort of like a bulletproof coffee. Um... I'll have this, I'll have, I drink this water, is a LMNT, stay salty, it's minerals. Uh, that's another 24 ounce or 20 ounce. I'll drink one of those in the morning. Throughout the day I'll have water or seltzer, Perrier or Pellegrino. And I'll have an occasional espresso, no cream. Never. You can have cream on the carnival diet, I don't. And um, I'll go all day with eating nothing. And at night, like last night, I had three hamburgers, no bun, of course, with egg on top. You're supposed to eat until you're satis comfortably full. And um, if during the day I'm hungry, like yesterday, my guy went to Wendy's. I asked him to get me three patties without the bun, which these fast food places will do. Not, as the, not that it's the best meat to eat, but in a pinch, when you're out and about, you can go to McDonald's and have just a patty um, if you're hungry. Or some mornings, if I feel like it, I'll have a uh, stop at the gas station. They have the egg sandwiches. I'll buy an egg sandwich, throw away the bread, kiss it first. And my mother said, always kiss bread if you throw it away. And I'll take the egg off the bread and eat the egg. But most days, I'll have one meal a day. And like now, I'm not hungry. Uh, somebody can bring a box of donuts, and it wouldn't faze me in the least. They can eat it in front of me. I have no desire to have it. You lose all those cravings. You don't crave nothing. Heartburn, gone. After one week, heartburn was gone. I don't live on Tylenol anymore. My legs have dried up. I'll be able to wear shorts, which I haven't worn shorts in about 15 years. And basically the diet is very simple. Water or seltzer. Meat. Fish. You can have shrimp, lobster, salmon, uh, butter, no olive oil, beef tallow, lard, Bacon fat, bacon, but be careful with bacon. You got to find one that's loaded with sugar. All our food, the FDA should be held accountable with our government. They're not doing the right thing. A lot of garbage in our food that should not be there. Learn, read the label. If you don't do nothing else in this, what I'm telling you, which you don't have to follow me, but I'm just... Learn to read the labels, and you'll see 
It's an eye opener. It's, they're killing us. Sugar is the addiction. All these cereal commercials you're feeding your kids is all garbage food. It's garbage. I'm telling you, it's a multi-million dollar market. It's garbage. Not good. So, if nothing else, you don't want to do the carnivore diet. And you got to be careful because you get a lot of pushback. You tell your doctor you're going on a carnivore diet, and say, no, it's no good for you. You're going to clog your arteries. You're going to ruin your kidneys. Those are all myths. Meat, water, and salt. That's it. After you reach your goal, then you can introduce, if you want, a low-carb vegetable. Like if you look at, follow George Bruno, he's very healthy, God bless him. He was on a carnivore diet, and now he eats like a well-balanced meal, have a vegetable, and but he, he's reached his goal, and I think that's probably why he introduces uh, that stuff back. But, um, which you can do. I mean, I love broccoli, and I'd like to have it again, which I will. But I want to get down to where I need to be. Knee pain, I had bad knees from standing up for 47 years on the bench. Um, knees feel much, much better. My joints feel better. I sleep better. I don't live on Tylenol and Advil anymore. Um... And the only downside to this diet, if you want to call it a downside, it gets boring because it's, when you open our refrigerator, it's full of eggs and water and meat. That's it. There's no garbage in there. There's nothing. If you wanted to pick on something at night, you can't. You can have some cheese. I, I stay away from cheese because it's a weakness and I don't want to OD on cheese, even though it is allowed. Um. I choose to stay away from it um, as much as I can. I'll have it once in a while. If I had like a treat, I'll put a slice of cheese on a hamburger. But as a general rule, I stay away from it. And most days, I'd say six out of the seven days, I'll eat the one meal a day. So you get the fasting benefit, and then you get the benefit from meat only. And I urge you to at least entertain it like I said if nothing else look at the ingredients and try to buy a better alternative get away from the sugar our bodies do not need sugar cancer loves sugar and you don't need it it's no good for you and if as you get older you'll get uh, you become uh, diabetic more than likely and it's just no good and it should not be in the food the way it is. There was an article about Costco rotisserie chickens that they sprinkle it with uh, a, a sweetness to keep you addicted. They said it's still a good alternative if you were to throw away the skin because the sugar didn't really penetrate the meat too much. But on a carnivore diet, if you do eat chicken, you want to eat the skin so you wouldn't... Uh, you get the one that's plain, um, if possible. And I feel better than I felt in 15 years. So I'm never going back. Never. I'm not covering this ground again. I've been on a yo-yo diet my whole life. It's been like this, up and down, up and down. I'm not doing it. This is it. This is a lifestyle. And... Look into it. Look up Dr. Ken Barry, Jason Fong. They do a good job explaining it. And they're real doctors that are just trying to help people. And Ken Barry, he'll tell you right to your face. And he'll tell you to a doctor's face. Your doctor's an asshole. Some of the things that people tell him their doctor said. I mean, listen. You know what somebody told me years ago? A doctor is like anybody else. There's good doctors, there's bad doctors, there's good mechanics, there's bad mechanics. You don't know what their passing grade was. 
65 this passing, you know. And you got their opinion. Many doctors I went to over the years, they were heavier than I was. So obviously they don't have a handle on health. And they're going to tell me how to be healthy. So, and basically they, they're prescription writers. Which, I mean, save a lot of people's lives, but you're really far better off if you control your body chemistry through diet, right? Especially as you get older. When, you know, when you're 30, your body can handle a lot of different things that it can't handle. You just don't have the resilience when you get older. So check it out. I'll give you updates from time to time. Meat, salt, and water. That's it. Meat, salt, and water. Butter, bacon. It's good for you. It'll make you healthy. And it's easy to shop. You can do it as cheap as you want. You can go with chopped meat instead of ribeyes because meat's up there now. We eat a lot of chopped meat because uh, we make hamburgers. We make... Uh, a a carnivore meatloaf, we'll put bacon in it and no onions. You can't have any plant-based stuff, so it's all meat. We'll mix in with a little pork and make a nice meatloaf. Steak, you can go with the cheap alternatives, sous vide it. If, if it's tougher meat to um, tenderize a little bit. Pork is usually fairly inexpensive. Chicken, but make sure, like I said, uh, thighs. You want the fattier, you want a good fat to protein ratio. So fry it in lard or uh, put butter on it to get that fat to protein ratio. Uh, wrap it in bacon. Uh, you can wrap the boneless chicken thighs with bacon, or and uh, it's really good. It's I, I can't say enough good things about it. It's worth a try. Start small and start by reading the labels. And if you can't understand it, don't put it in your mouth. It's the best way to look at it. It should be no more than two or three ingredients. If it's, you see some things, they got almost a paragraph written on the back. That you don't need. So I hope that helped you or enlightened you. Thank you for the support. Look up, there's many, many good videos out there on it, and uh, I recommend it, and it's working for me, and I'm never going back. It's a lifestyle change, and salute to all of you. Thank you for the kind words and encouragement. It helps, and I appreciate it, and catch you on the next one.